Oke, okay. uh, hi educators from uh, around the world. So we meet again in this online educators meetup. This is our 12 educators meetup. Uh, I'm Lisa, uh, the chief creative of Priya ID. So it's really nice to meet you all here. Uh, before we start, uh, let me share briefly about Priya ID. So it's going to be a bit long. So please be patient. So Kriya ID is a center for developing creativity and innovation of the youth through collaborative activities that inspire, create, and dedicate their creations to the society. So we implement our working cycle, which is inspiring, creating, and dedicating in designing our learning experiences for the students that can be integrated and also implemented in their real life through several programs. So we have some programs such as learning to read, make innovation and dedicate it, or we call it <coughs> mind for class, and then creativity research, invention, innovation, and as well as kids and youth project preparation. So in carrying out our uh, program, so we usually um, collaborate with many partners and many uh, vendors from around the world, from different backgrounds, and also uh, Let's say we have a theme park, school, universities, innovation center, and other institutions which concern on education in order to produce unique and also useful uh, as well as sustainable work for our society. So for this educators meetup for, for this month, Kriya ID and Akhilaju collaborate with several partners. So our collaborators are SL2, uh, which is based in Medan, and then we also collaborate with Asian Foundation, and this event is also a part of the World Creativity and Innovation Week 2020 <coughs> that was celebrated with uh, partners in other 55 countries as well. Okay, so we like to introduce also and also to thank SL2, who also become the host in this Zoom meeting this afternoon. So thank you for helping us arranging this meeting. Uh, SL2 is also one of our partners, uh, as I mentioned, based in Medan, uh, Indonesia, and SL2 also runs Educators Meetup in Medan area, while Kriya ID uh, runs Educators Meetup in Surabaya area. Uh, so for this session, uh, we'd love to have Pak Janio as the CEO of uh, SL2 Indonesia to give us short briefing. So the time is yours, Pak Janio. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Hi, Akib. Hi, everyone. I wish you all are well. My name is Janino from SL2 Indonesia in Medan. Thank you for having me here. Well, Sustainable Living Lab is a sustainability consultancy. We are addressing the innovation needs of three Ps, which is public, private, and people sectors. We are based out of our innovation lab in Singapore. Indonesia, India. In Indonesia, our first branch, our first office is in Medan. Our focus is in technological empowerment to create social impact by using human-centered design and also future thinking. We have been working closely with many partners, including Korea ID, and also with governments from several countries in rolling out technology curriculum such as IoT and artificial intelligence. And we are also involved in several upskilling programs to tackle the youth unemployment. In terms of the advancement of our education, we do believe that educators must be able to grow and upskill themselves sustainably. So that's why we are also starting Educators We Talk in Medan together with Kriya to have a growing learning community of educators. So, yep, I wish you enjoy the content of this Educators Meet Talk so we can learn and grow together. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Pak Janio, for uh, the greetings for us. Okay, so anyway, for those who joined the session for the first time, uh, because we already ran the session uh, 12 times, if you, already, uh, if you just joined the session and this is your first time, maybe you still have no idea about uh, what is Educators Meet Talk? So let me share briefly. So Educators Meet Talk is one of uh, our program that helps monthly. So we usually uh, 
deliver decision in the last uh, week uh, in every month. So usually it's on Thursday. Uh, educators New Talk is initiated by CID and ACID as a platform for educators to share information that related to educators. But now since we have partnered in Medan, uh, SL2 will also handle educators New Talk but uh, only limited in Medan area. So this session is designed as a sharing session to inspire educators about the update of educational um, topics. So the topics is independently chosen by the speaker that uh, will be submitted to PID first, and then we will or through SL2, and then we will review to make sure that the topics still in line with our concern and goal. Uh, well, the participants of Educator Me Talk uh, can be from teachers, parents, students, and also other people that are interested in education educational uh, development. So in this educators new talk session, everyone can be a speaker and also everyone can be participant. So we have done uh, the educators new talk for 11 times offline and then, uh, uh, sorry, 10 times uh, offline. So we meet in person and then our 11 session, which is the last, uh, last month, we conducted uh, through WhatsApp group. So today is our 12th time, and this is uh, for this time we start using Zoom. So later on at the end of the session, we would like to ask for your feedback uh, about how we run the session today using Zoom. So we really need your feedback to improve. And uh, why we use uh, this and that application is because we still want to accommodate all the educators around the world, especially Asian uh, Asian educators. Who wants to keep upgrading themselves uh, during this physical distancing and working from home situation? So, for this session, uh, before we start, we will set all the participants' audio setting to be on mute mode. So, only the speaker will uh, will be able to share or will be able to have the the audio setting to be uh, unmute. And you still can ask questions. So for the participant, you still can ask questions to the speaker by typing your question in uh, the chat room, okay? But please use uh, this format. I will type the format here. So because uh, uh, we know that you guys are from several countries participating, so the format is hi, I'm, and then you mention your name. And then uh, I'm from, so please mention your country. Okay, so we would like to get more friends also from this session and then after that you start your question okay so i have uh typed the format in the chat room so you can take a look at your uh, chat room and then if you want to ask question to akit our speaker for today so you can use uh, this format okay so let's get to know more about our speaker today, uh, Akib Alfi. So Akib is currently working in Singapore with six years of experience working in education industry. And he has been at the topmost level of companies, director of business development, and also now as the business manager. Akib did his bachelor in 2013 in chemical engineering from National University of Singapore and has been working in a STEM-based education company as director at Riskit, and now recently joined an ad tech startup, uh, namely AI Teach You, AI Love Venture, as the business manager. So everyone, please welcome Akit Alfi. Can we do applause? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. So, Akip, you can start. All right. Thank you so your... much for the lovely introduction. Okay. Thank you so much for everybody to be here. It's so many people joining in, and I still see some people joining in in the waiting room as well. Uh, welcome. And those who are fasting, happy Ramadan to them. I'm fasting too. So, hopefully, we can end before my time gets over. 
But uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Uh, as, as you said, so I think I, sh I have put some display. I'll just share the screen. Just give me a moment, please. Okay. And, and as you said, so if you have any questions, just keep typing those questions and I will try to answer most of them. Uh, just give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen. So I know. Okay, awesome. Perfect. Thank you. All right, so let me just uh, do an overview first that what I'm going to be talking about is not, no, I'm not going to go deep into how we are using artificial intelligence uh, in education sector. We are using it in a lot of other places as well, but in education sector, of course, there's so many different things that are happening at the deep end of it. I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to do an overview of AI in education. And by the end of my talk, hopefully you will get an idea and a few examples that you can Google through, you can research through and then try to implement on your own, like how you can utilize those different applications that uses AI. Uh, and then that can help you in educate these children. So let me start off, of course, as she said, so I'm a chemical engineer, basically, uh, graduated in 2013, but then moved on to the education sector totally differently. So I jumped on it because I was studying and as we all study, and then we figured out, figured out that education is not really helping us out. Uh, my passion was basically that as, as a student, I should wake up and be and love to go to school rather than just, just stay at home and like, oh, I need to go to school again. So that kind of mentality, I want to just let, let it off. And that's where I joined the start of Waste Kids. Uh, and then that's where we had different types of STEAM education curriculum that we were portraying to the schools. And it was, it was quite fun because we were doing a lot of different fun science experiments. We were doing fun arts program, maths programs, creativity conferences and workshops, uh, holiday camps and birthday parties, making sure all the sciences that we study are super fun, energetic and entertaining. Uh, so for our classes at, at least, so we had a lot of students who would not want to go out of the class. Uh, and once the session was over, they would love to come back again for the session as well. And that's where we feel loved about it. And that's how we feel that how education should be. So we should really be waking up. We should be encouraging these students to wake up and come to get the knowledge rather than be forced knowledge at them. And as we all know, if something is forced upon us, we really generally don't take it well. So, so the whole idea should be to change this whole dynamics of education and on how we can basically make education fun for everybody. And a lot of these partners who have called me here have been trying their all their best. And of course, we are still in learning processes as well. And I hope to learn from you guys as well on what kind of things work for you. Uh, because again, that's where AI is solving things for us because we, every student is different. And right now, I think we are in the perfect moment in time where we are actually understanding that how different students have different needs and how we can talk to them accordingly. And as one teacher who is controlling a class of 30 students, it's really hard to figure out, okay, what each child wants. But AI can, do, do, can use all the brain power for, for the teacher and the teacher can just use it to implement it effectively. So that was my biscuit name basically. And then AI comes in when I joined this AI Love Venture company and we are developing a language learning, uh, language learning game, uh, which is designed for four to eight year olds who can learn to speak the language first. Uh, what we were trying to do is basically that all, whenever anybody go to a language center, they start by learning the alphabets, they start learning you know, different types of writing methodologies. And we are scrapping all of that. We are like, okay, once you try to learn, like as adults, when we try to, learn a new language we try to ask like how do you say these things so we're trying to work on spoken parts first and then go to the learn uh, reading parts and then lastly at the writing part so there's a different approach like a totally upside uh, upside up, upside down approach that we are having in the zengu learning processes which you can talk to me about it later as well if you have questions regarding this zengu app specifically so let me go to the next part so let me talk about artificial intelligence first so I'm a Google person. Uh, if there are any Apple fans, I'm sorry, but, <laughs> but I'm a Google person. So I love what everything that Google does. And they have developed this really beautiful, really simple link, which has a lot of different applications on how a student, a child with zero background can learn about AI, artificial intelligence. And I'm going to showcase you some, some examples as well, accordingly, how we can utilize these. So, so as you can see, so when you go, there's like a lot of different experiments. There's a full nice video. So you can learn how writing, how when you write, AI can improvise that accordingly, then how you can learn and you can do all of these experiments as well. I'm gonna showcase you the drawing part, which is very fun as well. It's like a fun game that you can play with your students as well when you're teaching them. So, so it will tell you to draw, for example, a boomerang. 
and I am really bad in drawing, but I will try my best. So once you draw, for example, a boomerang, it automatically guesses that it's a boomerang already. So like, let me draw a piece of bread now. I have no idea how. So, so if I, so he still keep trying to guess different things while I'm drawing, like, okay, what am I trying to, right? And if I can't draw in it, so that's, so it's gonna save all of these things for us, basically. So let me just quickly go through like a pineapple now. Oh, it's not a potato. I think that's how a pineapple looks like. Oh my God, it's a mosquito now. So as you can see, so, so it's trying to guess as, as long as I'm drawing as well. So the, the way I, it would work bet would be the fact that it's going to make sure, it's going to learn from my drawings as well later on. And then it will also make sure that I am getting better at it in drawing and not just drawing. So it becomes a hockey stick. So let me just quickly skip that part as well. So as you can see, so, so you can see all of this and then there's a big types of doodle set that you're gonna see how people have been drawing all of this. So for example, I was drawing a boomerang and you will see all sorts of different variations that people have been drawing and that's how it will save it and then learn from it in the future. So if somebody starts drawing like a picture like this, it will say it's a boomerang. It can look like an apple, for example. So there's like all sorts of random pictures that, that nobody can recognize. But even if a person has drawn this one now, it will recognize it as a boomerang easily and effectively because it's getting a lot of data for, from that end. Similarly, there's another arcade game. Uh, it's called Symmetris. I, I have all of these uh, links and all of these statements in the PDF, uh, in the PowerPoint that I will share with you anyways at the end. So in this game, we need to have association words. I cannot write down refrigerator. I need to write something that is closely related to refrigerator and then the word will come down so now a bird maybe it flies so for example so it's a word association game and the faster i do the more points i'm going to get so it's just a very fun and entertaining games that you can play and how again it's doing is it's, it's saving all of my suggestions as well and using other people's suggestions whoever has been used playing this game forever and using words that relate to telephone and storing it and then as soon as i type it it will match it effectively for, for me as well. So there's a lot of fun tools and fun games that you can draw. There's music, there's a lot of other experiments. Interplay mode is another very fun. Touch type is another super fun activity that you can do. You can learn how to teach a snake on, when to go where and how to go about it as well. Shadow art is very fun as well. So there's a lot of different tools that you can utilize accordingly and, and make sure that of course as teachers, as parents, as students, how you can get to know more about artificial intelligence and how it does it. So there's a few uh, interesting activities here for, for you all to try out later on as well. Uh, so, okay. So next up is of course, so where do we actually use artificial intelligence and how we can utilize it? So artificial intelligence, we use it in automated parking systems in, in cars now. A lot of them, we have auto, car, auto parking systems in the cars where you a person can get out of the car and just which push it to have it on parking. And the car will automatically figure out the spot and park it effectively. There's a lot of spectacular senses in, in a lot of mobile phones now that automatically do all of the AI for you. And then of course, personal assistance on when you ask a suggestion, it will automatically answer you. There's a lot of it with Google, with Apple, and with Microsoft and Samsung pushing on the senses parts for us as well. So in terms of specifically for education, we have a lot of different tools and as teachers, it's really hard for us to figure, connect all of these millions of tools that are out there. So a lot of AI companies, what they're doing is they're creating one set which can combine a few hundred tools together so that and automatically generate those tools for, for the teacher as well. And then of course, it becomes personalized. So we, as you know, that students are all different. They learn differently. Teachers are all different and they teach differently. So all these different things, we can personalize it to a specific audience or a specific person as well to, to make it super effective. Consultation again, so then comes the consultation part. So of course, we can easily figure out, okay, what they are missing and how we can make sure that they get best and better at it accordingly as well. So there's a lot of different things of, of course, unbiased grading and file. So we have seen this uh, forever, at least five years back, 
when whatever if if the teacher is in a good mood then you get awesome grades but if the teacher is not in a good mood you start getting really bad grades accordingly so so now we, we are giving all that power to the computer and computer as you know it are all unbiased well there are of course issues where they can be biased as well accordingly but of course so those are the negative aspects of it which we're going to discuss later on as well but as of now as we know it a lot of these essays even english essays computers can test and grade and they can be unbiased about it as well totally uh, and it's not just that teachers want to be biased a lot of teachers have a lot of different biases cognitive biases so you can learn about this like 15 16 different types of biases that every individual have no matter what they do so it's just that they they they're not aware of it a lot of times so computers we can teach them we can tell them okay you need to get rid of all of these biases if a person is from pakistan if a person from india it doesn't matter as long because you're just judging them on the basis of what they've written if they're from indonesia if they're from malaysia it doesn't matter you're just judging them from what they write what they what they have given to you and not their personality doesn't matter their characteristics doesn't matter their family their financial nothing matters is what they're doing so so now we are getting to a point where everybody is equal and everything is standardized as well smart content is another very powerful tool that we that i have some examples of later on as well and so this one is actually very important because we have so much content all around the world google we have every there's, there's millions of content for the same different same topic actually out there and it's really hard for the teacher for the parent for the student to figure out like okay i want to read this and that's how i'm going to understand so how computer will judge is of course so it will give you a question and then you answer it and then you will it will automatically judge how long it took you to answer that particular question as well so that it can give you an easier answer easier topic so that you can get it faster and then slowly take you to a difficult or complicated question as well later on and also show you or recommend your videos that are closely related to to that particular level you don't want to showcase a quantum theory entanglement phd uh, talk to to a kindergarten for example right so so you want to make sure that things are related and you can make those connections and that's where, where a lot of beautiful teachers are at they 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 they're not very beautiful communicators maybe but they are very beautiful in terms of connections and that that is the more important part for students nowadays because they have all the resources on the hands on the palm of the hands now with with the mobile phones and all they need is a beautiful connection that they can actually see because it takes forever to find that particular video to find a particular link which can enable them to understand the particular topic much easily so so teachers like us can have them connect those dots much faster uh, to have an effective learning then becomes of course scheduling and virtual virtual lectures as well so it, it automates everything for the teachers they don't need to figure out okay which time i will be free at, at what time of the day now that we all working from home because of the covid situation right so we need to figure out all those times so if you if you start putting in a lot of effort into the google calendar for example and it would automatically gauge how you spend your day how will you spend your day the next week and it would automatically say like okay i keep you perfectly you love to speak at this particular time so maybe you can if you have a talk push that talk at that particular time and that's how it can effectively tell tell me as a person as well, okay i'm good in uh, in communication during these parts of the day i'm good in thought process during this part of the day and it can effectively match for me all the different types of things that i need to do as well uh, then of course environments so with vr virtual reality and augmented reality uh, ai is also again artificial intelligence is also helping us like what kind of virtual reality tools that you can utilize for for specific topics what kind of augmented reality tools that you need accordingly uh, then comes customized tutoring and quizzes as well so of course you can get specific tutors as well available on, again on the palm of your hand like okay this is the kind of question that i have and this is the perfect tutor for me or this is the perfect tutorial question for me and that's how i can answer them accordingly to to have a beautiful learning aspect and environment accordingly so let's talk a bit more about the smart content so of course we we can we love creating new content but the way we do it of course is of course we take take a book and then start copying stuff uh, down from there but as teachers we don't just take one book we take maybe 10 books then we open 10 different tabs so there's like already 20 different things that that a teacher is looking at already and then also of course so they need to look at what the previous teacher did or what the previous year was done and need to upgrade that accordingly so there's so many different pages and content accordingly and what a robot what the computer with artificial intelligence can do is pick and choose specific for me i can just type out okay i want this can you find me three different types of resources that are best suited for this and it can automatically personalize that content for me accordingly 
Uh, and of course, so if I am doing like a virtual class, it can figure out, okay, what kind of content that I can use for virtual content and what I cannot use. So a lot of teachers nowadays are trying to use the same old methodology because that's how they have learned. That's how they've been doing it for the past 15, 20 years. So it takes, of course, it takes a long time to, to change the mentality, to change the step. And also, of course, to train them for that technology. So now what they do is they put a mobile phone and put a book down and then just like literally use a finger to, to showcase like, okay, this is what I'm teaching, which is not the case, which is not going to happen in the virtual environments. You know, so students have so many different things around them now. They're not sitting in a classroom where they're like in a jail state where they cannot run away as well, right? So the teacher has total control, so they can kind of focus them. But now from work from home situations, study from home situations, they cannot do that. So as teachers, we need to create that content, which is super interesting and super fun for them. Uh, so a few examples, like Cram 101, it's a comprehensible books and flashcard system. So it summarizes the books for them and you can, for students, for teachers as well, and you can figure out okay, what topics I want. And you can use flashcard system to, to get them to know things much faster and effectively as well. Again, NetX is another platform which provides a lot of electronic curriculum together in one spot and you can pick and choose quickly and then make a quick lesson plan out of it at the end with videos and audios as well. So, so these are just a few examples. I have, uh, I have a, uh, a, a comprehensive list at the end on the last slide as well, which you can take a look at it as well. So uh, with the smart content, again, my idea, uh, what I have learned over the years is that it's, to me, I don't want to blame the students I know some students are very hard. I know some students are crazy to get them into mind, mental focus as well. But what I feel that as soon as you give them something that they are really interested in, they will focus no matter what you do. A lot of in my classes, so, some, so a lot of time we are give, doing a fun lesson, fun science project, and then they're not listening to me. And as soon as I start doing it in a song with a dance, with some crazy movements, they're like, oh, what's happening? And they, they start focusing straight away, like what's happening really? And we, I personally did a lot of dances and, and tried to do yoga stretches in, in a classroom setting as well, which allowed the students to get, get that focus in because they, they're always trying to see like, oh, what's happening? And, and I think the hint that I, can all, that I can give you all is like the students love to follow the craziest person in the classroom. They're always looking at who is the craziest person because and it, at schooling stage, we all like to be cool. And so they're always trying to see like, what is the coolest thing right now in the class? So if, if the teacher is the cool person, then yes, they will definitely follow them. But if there's any other chill child who is more cooler than that teacher, they will try to follow them. So, so it's always, as a teacher, you always need to think about all of these things. Okay, if they, that child did this particular thing, how did the others react to it as well? So as teachers, we need to make sure that we are the most interesting subject in the class so that they're looking at us. If it's your presentation, they will all be looking at the presentation. So again, is that what you want in your presentation? Do you want them to be looking at the slide or do you want them to be looking at you? So all of these things combine together to create an immersive experience for those students. And as I said, so it's not the student's fault. It's basically the teachers who need to step up their games to, to be more uh, efficient and to be more relatable as well. So, so that's part of the content. Then of course comes the fact that we need to be able to personalize the content accordingly. So why do we need, uh, where do we use the personal content So in, on Netflix and YouTube? So you, as soon as you start writing something, you get like different suggestions already. Netflix start giving you suggestions after you watch one sad movie, it will give you other 10 sad movies. So that's how a lot of these personalized content is is already working for you but in terms of students in terms of teacher how do we utilize it so there's a lot of tools again at the bottom over here you can see like a lot of different uh, i talk to smart and brainly there's so many out there that are trying to give us those personalized content as well so if you're learning about gravity so what kind of lessons you can create out of gravity so if you want to do experiments okay let me give you a list of different types of gravity experiments that you can use so there's a lot of different suggestions out there but then again the whole problem comes back to us again that there's like a million options out there. So there's a lot of these tools that I've listed down that I have felt over the years that, that kind of help the teachers much faster to be more efficient and to find this content much faster. Uh, but of course, if you want to create, a lot of people are trying to create their own things as well, of course, which of course is not a wrong thing because that's what they believe is going to be the right thing. But again, I believe again in this personalized content scenario is that whatever you're trying to create, somebody already has thought of it before. So if they have put it there, then it's perfect. Then it's already good to use, of course. So why, as they say, why create another wheel? 
I mean, you already have wheels are out there, right? So you don't need to start from scratch. There's already stuff there. Maybe you can upgrade them and personalize it to your specific setting. A classroom in US does not work as how you want it to work in Singapore or Malaysia or Indonesia. They're all different people. They're all different scenarios. And one classroom in Indonesia is totally different from the other classroom. And that's where I think the schooling system is trying to ramp up their upgrade skills as well with Previously, they were like, oh, I taught this. You go ahead and follow the same thing and teach this to, 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 to your class now. That does not work anymore. The students are all different. They need different stuff as well. They need personalized content for this specific class. And now it's not just about specific specificity for the class. It's about their own individuality as well. Everybody is different, and we need to make sure that we can provide that specificity for their students or at least give them an option to like okay Akib you you still cannot understand gravity here are the suggestions for you specifically to go down and I'm sure these will help you out so if a teacher knows that there are more things that I can suggest to them it will help the, the class as well accordingly so I can give an overview lecture overview topic explain to them and then figure out okay Akib is not understanding this particular point okay these are the suggestions for you and these are the suggestions for you so that way they can easily figure out how they can understand all of these lessons accordingly and that's where AI can help us figure out like because it will give us more suggestions than we can actually find uh, previous 30 years before the only examples a teacher could give was from the book from one book 20 years later, it was just like, okay, I have five books. Okay, you can, if you can't understand this particular book, maybe find this book. But now with, with internet, we have unlimited resources. But it's finding the specific content is the hardest part for students, especially that they have long hours of study time. So as teachers, we can help them by putting in suggestions accordingly and examples for them so that they can figure out how they can manipulate the lesson plans accordingly.